Are you struggling to figure out which leads to focus on and how to convert them faster? Hi, I'm Angel. I'm a marketing specialist working in tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to master lead scoring and prioritization within HubSpot. We're going to go over how to set up smart and effective scoring rules and then how to integrate those scores into your marketing strategy. If you want to follow along, you can use the link in the description to get HubSpot for free. This is how to HubSpot. Lead scoring may sound complicated, but it's essentially a system that allows sales and marketing to prioritize their leads based on their potential to convert. It's like a shortcut to identify who you should be talking to first. Lead scoring will assign a numerical value to your lead as well as a low, medium, or hot label based on that value. The score is evaluated based on multiple factors such as how they interacted with your site, their demographic information, their professional details, and even all the ways that you have interacted with them like through ads or emails or SMS. The higher the score, the warmer the lead, meaning they're more likely to be interested in your product or service. Lead scoring can be a really, really important tool for sales and marketing teams because it helps those teams prioritize their time and ensure that they're focusing on the warmest leads first. So how do we set up lead scoring within HubSpot? Let's dive in. To start, we have to head over to the marketing tab and then down to lead scoring. Now you can either create your new score with AI or do it all on your own. Let's try it with AI first. First, we select what kind of score you want to create. So is it a contact engagement score or is it a contact fit score? A contact engagement score measures your contact's level of engagement based on their behaviors and interactions. And then a contact fit score evaluates how closely that contact aligns with your ideal customer based on their demographics and other criteria. Let's go ahead and select contact engagement score. First, we want to give our score a name. So I'm just going to call it May engagement score. Then we want to fill out the fields below. So there is your start stage and I want to leave that as lead. And then in the successful end stages, I want to also add marketing qualified leads as well as the sales qualified lead. For the time frame, we're going to select 90 days. Once you hit create score, HubSpot will start to evaluate all of your contacts based on that score. It really is that easy to do it with AI. If you want to create a score on your own, you'll have to add in the events and property rules yourself. So again, we're going to choose whether we want contact engagement, contact fit, or a combined score. We're going to do combined score. So for example, let's say we want to add in the event of a page visit. So we'll add an event group. We'll hit add event criteria and then scroll down to web events. Then when you hit select event, you'll be able to see page visited. So from there, you can add in more details so you can filter the event by URL or by browser or by city. You can also add in an additional time frame as well. So in the last 90 days or 30 days or 60 days or whatever you like. And then you'll have to decide how many points that event adds. So let's do 10 points. If you want to add in multiple scoring groups, you can do that as well. So let's say you want one for awareness and one for conversion. So to do that, we can just go down to add event group and then it'll create a new scoring group for you. So if this scoring group is more for awareness, and the second scoring group is more for conversions, then we might want to adjust the weight of each scoring group. So right now we have the first one set to 100. So since it's for awareness, maybe let's set this to 30. For my conversion group, I'm going to add in something like a form entry because that shows me that the lead is more interested. To personalize your lead even further, you can actually add in a DK score, but you can't do it if you have a time frame. So let's turn off our time frame and then turn on on DK scores. Then you can choose how much you want to reduce the score by and how often. So let's say we're going to reduce it by 30% every three months. This way you'll have a more accurate photo of exactly how warm those leads really are. Once you're happy with your scoring groups, we can head over to the contacts tab and select what groups of contacts we want the score to apply to. So we can do it for all of our contacts or a specific list that you may have. In the settings tab, you'll be able to label your new score value. So we'll call this May Combined Score. And voila, you can go ahead and review and turn on your score. If you want to set up an automation that is based on your new lead score, for example, once one of your leads hits 100 points, we can do that under automation and workflows. When we go into create workflow, we'll be able to decide what action triggers this workflow. To find your new lead score, we can go into data changes and then record meets a set of custom filter conditions. 
Then we can select contact and then select contact properties. In here, you'll be able to find the lead score that you just created and name. So mine was called combined score. So in here, we're just gonna type in is equal to 100 points. And then voila, this workflow is gonna be triggered once one of your leads hits 100 points based on your new criteria. Since we know this lead is quite warm and quite active, we can do something like sending out an email as the action with maybe a special offer because we know they're more likely to convert. Other ways that I would recommend you using your lead scores are to prioritize follow-ups to those warm leads, to segment based on your lead scores within your marketing campaigns, to create an automated lead nurturing campaign for those people who have lower scores. You can even use your lead scores as a benchmark for your campaigns to see how a campaign has performed based on how engaged a customer is. And there you have it. That's how you can use HubSpot's powerful lead scoring and automation features to really streamline your sales process and enhance your marketing strategies. By having these systems in place, you're really making sure that no lead gets left behind and that your team can focus on the most promising prospects. My very last tip is to revisit your automations and your criteria often. You want to make sure that they are aligned with your marketing and your sales goals. HubSpot's features are designed to be flexible so that they can actually grow with you while you grow. If you found this tutorial helpful, definitely check out the other videos on this channel. Also, if you want to try out any of these features, you can try HubSpot for free through the link in the description. I'm Angel and I'll catch you in the next one.